In this tutorial, I will guide you through the process of setting up your website and preparing it for web design using a simple click and drag interface. Here's what I will cover. First, you will learn how to set up your website on your own domain in three simple steps. Then I will show you how to make your website secure by activating the HTTPS protocol. This is a free addition in your hosting service. Finally, I will introduce you to WordPress and show you how to activate the Elementor plugin. This will be the main tool for all web design. Let's get started. Step one is you need to get your domain. A domain is the URL address that a person types into a browser to visit your website. For this step, think what you would like to call your website. We will check if your domain is available in the next step. Step two involves setting up your hosting service. The hosting service is a server that stores your website online. There are two main criteria that you should keep in mind when selecting a hosting provider. Number one, your hosting has to be fast. Cheaper hosting providers save costs by operating your website on slower hardware. The consequence is your website takes longer to load. Number two, your hosting has to be reliable. By reliability, I am talking about keeping your website online. There is one service that I recommend, and that service is SiteGround. Let's set up your domain and your hosting service. Click the link below this video to get started. This will take you to SiteGround where you will buy your hosting. On this page, scroll over Hosting and select WordPress Hosting. Here you have three different hosting options. If you are planning to have one domain only, so one website, then select the startup option. It's the best for choosing to run your first website. If you plan to use multiple domains and try to run a couple of different websites, then you should select grow big because you can have multiple websites on your hosting package. In this tutorial, I will select startup for one block. So I will click here, get plan. Now enter the domain that you thought of in step one. So I will select a .com domain. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I will just write sample Tom Westek and click proceed. And if it goes to the next page, as it did here, it means that the domain, which I typed in, is available. So now it's a matter of filling in your contact information. Now you should arrive at the Purchase Information tab. And the first part here is the Hosting Services. So we selected the startup plan earlier and now over here the data center mine is set for Europe because it automatically detects my location and selects the data servers that are closest to me. So it should automatically detect your location. But if you want to change your data servers, just click here and then you can select four different locations. So choose the data center which is closest to you. This will ensure the fastest load times around your location. So I'm selecting hosting for 12 months. Scrolling down, we have the extra services. So I am registering a new domain here. Then we have domain privacy. If you want your details private, you should select this option. If you do not select this option, when you register your domain, your details will be available on the Whois website. This means that anyone can look up your website and find out that you are the owner of the domain. I usually don't select this because it's just a blog that you are starting out, but it depends on the type of website you are planning to build and it might be a good idea to select this one. Then we have the SG Site Scanner. This is a service that monitors your website and notifies you if your site has been hacked or injected with malicious code. I don't recommend this. If you have a developed website with over 20,000 visitors monthly, then you can consider this but for a new website, it's not required. Next, we scroll down. Make sure you confirm with the terms and conditions. If you would like to receive SiteGround news, then select this and then click Pay Now. Now your order will be processed. 
You should receive an email when everything is set up, your domain and your hosting. At that moment, you are ready to move on to step three. Step three involves installing WordPress. WordPress is a free web development platform and it's very intuitive to use. So head over to SiteGround and log into your account. Once logged in, go to My Account and then go to cPanel. In this screen, head over to Auto Installers and click on WordPress. Now click on Install. It will automatically select the latest version of WordPress for you. So choose your installation URL. So this is your domain. I created a sample domain for this tutorial. Make sure that HTTP is selected. HTTPS is more secure and it is required. And I will show you how to get a HTTPS certificate for your website after we install WordPress. So once this is set up, let's scroll down, give your website a name and a description. Do not worry, this isn't permanent. You can always change it later after you install WordPress. Then set up an admin username. Give your admin a password and then admin email. Do not use the one that is set up here. Use your personal email for this. This will be required just in case you have to reset the password for your WordPress login. Moving down, select your language. For me, it is English. Then we have a choice to install some plugins here. Limit login attempts. This one I will highlight. Basically, somebody who is not authorized tries to log into your website and enters the wrong password three times, it will lock the WordPress installation. And then you will get an email on your admin email and then you can reset the password. So it's just a safety feature. Classic editor, I'm not going to select this because I want to use the new WordPress dashboard. Then over here for WordPress starter, I'm going to unselect this. WordPress starter automatically installs some features to WordPress. I believe it is better if you learn how to install these features yourself. This way you will be able to add or remove WordPress functionality without any difficulties in the future. And I will show you in the next tutorial how to configure your WordPress installation. So with everything set up, click on install. And congratulations, WordPress has just been installed. If you look here, you have two URLs. The first one, this is the URL for your domain, for your website. So if you click on it, it opens a blank website. So at this moment, this is how your blog looks like. Do not worry, we will configure this. And then the second URL, this is the administrative URL. The difference is that at the end, you have here WP admin. So if we click on this, it will take us to a WordPress login screen. And here we are in WordPress. Congratulations, you have successfully installed your WordPress blog. Now that your website is online, it's time to make it secure with a HTTPS protocol. Because at this moment, we have here not secure. So what we want is we want to make this secure. And we will make it secure by adding the HTTPS certificate to your website. So here in your SiteGround dashboard, go to My Accounts. Then click on Go to cPanel. Now scroll down. Go to Security and then click on Let's Encrypt. Over here, you have a section, install new Let's Encrypt certificate. So select your domain. Here's the sample domain I used earlier. And make sure this is selected, Let's Encrypt SSL, and click Install. Successfully installed SSL. Okay, so it has been added to the queue. 
which means we have to wait a couple of hours until the SSL certificate will be active. But that is all that is necessary to install your SSL. Okay, we're back on our website. So this is the non-secure HTTP version. Now let's change the URL and add HTTPS. And as you can see, you can see the padlock here, which means HTTPS is now active, which also means that to access WordPress, we just add WP admin to the end. Enter. And now we can log in. And now we are in our WordPress dashboard. And as you can see, the padlock is here. So our website is secure. Now let's do a general overview of WordPress and I will show you how to install and activate Elementor. This tool will be very useful for building websites using a click and drag interface. So here's our WordPress blog that we installed. And as you can see, at this moment, it's nothing special. It's just text on a white background. I think this is the WordPress 2019 theme. Well, anyway, let's change it. So let's go and log in to our WordPress dashboard. Once here, on the left hand side, you have a number of different options, a number of different menus. This is basically your way of navigating through WordPress. So I want you to go to Appearance and then Themes. So currently, the 2019 theme is installed on our WordPress dashboard. To install a new theme, click on Add New. And there are two options here. Either you can download a theme and then you can upload it to your WordPress installation, or you can browse all the themes that are available here. And when you pick something, then you can install it. Or if you want, you can first preview it. And this is a preview of how our theme would look. And then you can install it. So I'll close this for now. And what I'll do is there is one theme, it's available online. It's actually Generate Press. I like this theme, so I will actually install it. So I'll just click on Install. And when it is installed, it's not yet active. You actually have to activate it. So now you can see that we have two different themes installed in WordPress and the generate press theme is active. So let's preview it. Okay, so now our blog looks more like a website. Of course, we haven't added a menu yet and there is no content on it, but it looks a little bit better. When you have a theme active here, to customize this theme, on the left hand side, you click on customize. And then you have a lot of different menus that you can customize, such as the layout. Do you want two columns or do you want just one column without any side columns here? You can customize the main colors for your blog, the typography, which is the text, the site identity. I believe this is the site title and the tagline. If you don't want to have text over here, you can insert a logo. You can create different menus, widgets and additional CSS. This is just for extra styling. For now, it's not required. So let's close this section. And now let's click on plugins. So your WordPress installation will come with about two pre-installed plugins. Loginizer, this is the one that we selected when we were setting up hosting. And then we have SG Optimizer. This is a site ground plugin that basically boosts your load times. And as you can see, there is a newer version, so we can update it. But what I want to do is show you a plugin which will let you create your own web pages using a simple click and drag interface. So click the link below this video to get that plugin. This will take you to Elementor 
and you can download this plugin for free. So click here. If you want, you can subscribe. And on the next page, the download will automatically start. So here we have the plugin. Now we can close this and let's go back to WordPress. In the plugins page, click on add new. And then click on upload plugin. Choose your file. Select it, click on open and then install now. And now the plugin has been installed successfully, but we still have to activate it. And now on the left hand side, we have an Elementor option. Now let me just close this. So we have an Elementor option over here. So there are some settings here, but what I want to show you is if you go to pages and then let's create a new page. And let's call this page Elementor test. Let's publish it. And now we can view the page. So it's just a blank page with nothing on it. But we can click here, edit with Elementor. And it opens the Elementor editor. So we see here the our blog design and then this part here, it's the Elementor panel. And on the left hand side, we have different elements that we can click and drag onto the page. Click here. And let's add some text. If we want, we can add a picture. And every element that we add is fully editable. And there are a lot of, there are many different elements that you can basically click and drag and then do whatever you want. But like with the heading, we click on style, we can change the text color, we can change the text size. If we want to change how it appears on a mobile phone, then we click here, click on mobile. And we can change the text size. So it looks like this on a mobile phone. If we want to customize it for a tablet, we click here. So we can customize the text size or any element for a desktop, um, sorry, for a desktop, a tablet or a mobile phone. And if you want to create a separate page, which doesn't include this blog layout, then you click here, settings, page layout, and click on Elementor canvas. And now we have the elements that we added, but it takes up the full page. Well, let's just add a custom image here. Okay, so we've added an image here. The image is a little bit too big. So let's just change it. Okay, if we want to center the text. Basically, you have elements here, you click and drag them over here, you can publish and you can create any page that you like. And this is really, really good because if you need an idea for a page, you can actually look at what other people are doing and then create your own designs right here and no programming, no coding skills is required. So then let's close this. And when we go to plugins, we can see that Elementor is installed here and to access Elementor settings, we have this part over here. But to actually use Elementor, you have to go to the page and then edit with Elementor. If you do not see this, like let's go to some posts. So posts are for blog posts. We can click on edit. And then on the top, you see edit with Elementor.